And here tonight, uh, we're going to keep it simple, more Waterman uh, media. This is an old interview. I believe it's from, I'm not sure when this was, 2021. So this is Lonnie Chavis and Maya Miller. This is a uh, text interview transcript on the Waterman. And a look at them today. There's Lonnie Chavis. Wow, look at those dreadlocks. A nice style there. He's, he's grown up a lot. And there is Amaya dancing, frolicking in the uh, peach blossoms. Or I think they're cherry blossoms. Just looking up at the heavens. So we'll look at this retro interview from 2021 on The Waterman. So I'm going to read this. This is from uh, by Ashley. This is from uh, Ashley Company website. So I'll read this out. The Waterman is a heartfelt adventure film that will remind viewers of some of the, their favorite 90s era films. This coming-of-age story about a boy who is desperate to save his mother's life. I felt it was more of a jo Joseph Campbell story, honestly. <clears throat> his life is so desperate that he is willing to solve a local mystery is now available to watch on demand. I had the opportunity to interview the stars of the film, Lonnie Chavis and Amaya Miller, about their roles and what it was like filming The Waterman. So here we go. Uh, here we go. So this is uh, the interviewer. Overall, the story encourages viewers to face their fears. Did you have any moments on the set that put you in the place of having to face your fears? Uh, Lonnie says, I had a lot of fears during this movie. Heights was one and darkness was another. I still have a fear of heights. Darkness I used to have when I was a kid. I had anxiety too. The log scene was definitely a difficult one for me. Yeah, I remember that. When I got on top of it, I did not want to get down. And my mom tried to calm me down because I felt like I was being pressured. The log was over the green screen, though. Because I thought, if I make, add my commentary, I thought it was over a real waterfall. I thought, oh, shit, maybe he had a right to be like, nah, it's not that bad. It wasn't that bad. Anyway, anyway, anyway. Uh, so his mom tried to call, calm me down because I felt like I was being pressured. I mean, looking at everybody, they were expecting me to do something. She tried to calm me down. She just couldn't because I just kept ranting on how high this was and how scary this was. And then Mr. David stepped in, David Oyelowo, the director, and he reminded me of why I'm doing this, why Gunner is doing this. Yeah. I mean, you got to do some stunts a little bit. Um, Amaya, I still remember, I'm still thinking of the scene from House by the Lake where Amaya was submerged in that little jacuzzi, that, that little under, under the carpet water. That was really like, wow. I don't think I could open my eyes underwater. Anyway. Amaya says, one of my fears with this role was not really achieving everything that I knew was capable of as an actress. That's something that I had to kind of grow from and learn from and know that I'm doing a good job. I was challenged and Lonnie helped me. I think we both had many fears to face, but we came out a lot stronger. Yeah, you're not going to get everything in that, but you try the best you can. That bug scene, it grosses me out thinking about it. Can you share what it was like? How real were the bugs? Amaya says, they weren't real, but Lonnie, didn't you have a scene at the end of the movie and they used real bugs? Lonnie says, yes, they are called Madagascar hissing cockroaches or something. And apparently they hiss. <laughs> I've seen them at museums. Amaya's like, so bad. Lonnie says, when I walked into the set, onto the set that day, I heard hissing. And I thought they were snakes. I mean, they're huge. They're literally huge. And I had to interact with them and I hated it. I wanted to go home, dude. They're so huge. It's creepy. I don't mess with bugs like that. So side note for me, uh, we had dogs. And this dog passed away in 2011. But when he was alive, he was barking at something. And at first I thought it was a cat, like a Maya's cat, like the one she has, that like great cat, like hissing. But then I saw it had sharp teeth. It had like a rat's tail and had these ears. So I like it was a fucking possum. I was like, uh, yeah, I don't think so. Anyway, that's, that's that was just my experience. Uh, the interviewer goes on. The bugs are gross. But what about that sword? That had to be a fun experience getting to wield that. Lonnie says that was awesome. It felt like I felt like a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle. That was literally awesome. That was literally one of those things where I only thought of growing up and I wanted to do like I wanted to be a ninja. So this was like my dream goal just to hold the samurai sword walking around the woods fighting back evil. That was one of my favorite parts um, for me when I was in middle school. There was this kid uh, we, we I went to a Christian school and I was there for a couple of years. And one of my classmates had to he had the pleasure of holding a real samurai sword from a, a Japanese Christian man. And it was a, it was a real sword. This was not a Halloween play thing. This was a real heavy sword. So he was like, he was like nervous. So I remember that that was in the, um, I think it was in the seventh or eighth grade. I think in the film, 
The interviewer goes on. Gunner has a talent for drawing and he creates these amazing stories. Lonnie says, I actually do a little bit of drawing myself. I'm not as good as Gunner. Amaya says, he's pretty good. <laughs> Lonnie's like, stop, stop. They brought in a graphic artist to help me learn how to draw Gunner's way and it was pretty cool. He gave me some tips that I still use to this day. I, you know, for me, I have not drawn since I think the last story I was writing for my characters. I got to start drawing again. Anyway, it's been, it's been a while, but I've been drawing for years for me. Uh, Gunner faces a lot of trials in this film. Did you find any of them to be particularly challenging? Lonnie says, the one scene when I was telling Amaya's Joe about my mom being sick. Oh yeah, that one I did in Japanese. I was having a lot of trouble with that scene. Mr. David pulled me to the side. He doesn't say Mr. Oye Loa or David. No, no, I don't know. And he gave me a personal story about his life. And then he made me tap into my own feelings and I could see myself in Gunner. Basically, I am Gunner. I would do everything that Gunner was doing and how far Gunner goes. So you both seem to get along very well. What was it like filming together? Lonnie says, I, filming with the Maya, she was like my big sister throughout the entire film. We had so much fun together in between every single take. We would laugh about the dumbest things. And then as soon as they uh, said action, we would both snap right back into character. Amaya, she's honestly a true professional, one of the sweetest people ever. I love Amaya so much, and not only her, everybody, Miss Rosario, Mr. David, and especially Mr. Alfred. Mr. Alfred is such a cool guy, I had no idea he was Doc Ock, yep. Uh, he was in, uh, what, was I, what was he in? Some sort of sitcom. He was also, uh, what was his name? Dirk, da not Dirk Dastardly, the one uh, against Dudley Do-Right. Uh, my favorite, Amaya says, my favorite thing is the relationships that I've formed. I talk to Lonnie all the time. When I say that I truly gained a little brother, I really mean it. If you had to describe this film for someone who hasn't seen it but wants to, what would you say to them about The Waterman? Lonnie says, there's love, family, hope, and faith. Not only that, but there's a lot of genres that make up this movie as well. But what I hope a lot of people see is that you shouldn't take time for granted and that love has no limits. Amaya says, it's powerful. I think this film opened my eyes to how I love my mommy and have I have taken her for granted. How dare you? You better not forget her on Mother's Day. <laughs> I'll try. I'll do something nice for your mom on Mother's Day. My mom is. A, well, I'll try to do something. <laughs> and that she says she goes on, and that we have to enjoy life while we're living it. And I think that's one of the most powerful life lessons that we can learn. And I think I'm so fortunate to have learned it at a young age. The Waterman was filmed almost entirely on location in the woods of Oregon. If you're not familiar, Oregon doesn't always have the best weather. So, however, it does have some beautiful forests. Lonnie says it's hot some days. It was cold some other days. There were lots of days where it was raining. Most of the days it was raining, but still the whole set was pretty nice. What's next for you two? Where, we, where will we see you again? Lonnie says, I'm not spilling my any beans today. I, I can't tell you how many spoilers I've given over the years. Ah, just like Tom Holland. Amaya says, I am currently in Georgia. I wrapped at 2 o'clock this morning. I can't say much about this film, but it's very heavy, and I'm very excited for everyone to see it. And so Gunner, so it's, since that's on a quest, so it's basically the plot here. Uh, the only hope for rescue is Gunner's father, David Oyelowo, who directed this. So, great movie. Um, I like this. This is a cute interview. I, I really related to this. I have not, by the way, this is the first time I actually, I did not see this interview until right now as I'm filming this. So, I wanted to do that. So, uh, peace to you, uh, Lonnie. Hope you're doing good. And you know how I feel about you, Amaya. Wrote a long letter. <laughs> it was a hard one. But anyway. That is for your ears and eyes only. So let's move on to some, uh, what do we got? What do we got? Oh, yeah. New segment. New segment. I'm rearranging the segments here. Tall Things. Robert Pershing Wadlow. So he was born 1918 and died in 1940, and he stands at 8 foot 11 inches tall. Uh, he weighed 439 pounds and holds the title for the world's largest hands at 12.75 inches. World largest feet at 18.5 inches. What is it Joe Rogan would say he would have a dick like a tree trunk? Uh, I think he was talking about a basketball player. This is him. Wow, look at the... Look how tall. That is a tall man right there. So there's the smallest man. There's the tallest man. Uh, that's something. Here's, I don't know who that is. They've had some really tall people. Uh throughout the years. World's tallest man, Jesus. This is somebody else, though. 
shortest woman. Bizarre, bizarre. This, this. I remember this, there was like a two foot tall human being that was on the Jimmy Kimmel show, or uh, what is it? Uh, yeah, Jimmy Kimmel Live. That's amazing. Animal Corner is very simple. Just a turtle saying "Wow." <laughs> okay. <laughs> Nothing here to see. I get banned. And no turtles were harmed in the making of this video. The shell is a different story. Though that shell is pretty tough. The shredder. Nature's oddities. It's a peach blossom. This is a time lapse of a peach blossom. I used to have a peach tree. And you could I could tell the time of the year. Like in the summertime, late summer, the peaches would grow. And then by the fall, winter, the leaves will all fall. But then you see these little pink blossoms during the springtime. Um, it's dead now. I had to rip it out because it was no longer, it just it was just dried up. The roots were dried up. But that tree lived for about maybe 10 years. Anyway, see you all uh, next week. One, one more bonus video.